everything has changed. The old kind of media has changed. Yeah. Social media, it's a new monster out there. Like, I mean, the old and don't, don't get me wrong, if you work on TV and radio, there's space for everything right now. You know, like, I, I think there's a lot of, and we've spoken about this a lot, yeah. there's a lot of debate between what we call now old media, which is radio, TV, yeah. magazines, newspapers, all that kind of thing, with the new media, which is social media and, and the sure. channels that we, and all the platforms that we can use in social. And there's this war of like new versus old. And as much as I feel like we're obviously moving into the future and the future is going to be online, is online. I think it's about evolving. I think it's about us making sure that we can integrate the old with, with the new and make the old, quote unquote, I'm putting air quotes here, make the old have a flavor of the new, right? There's a lot of things that you can do with the old media, with radio and TV and all of that, in conjunction with all the new media that can make that old kind of sound new yeah. and look new and act new. It's been what, two and a half years without doing the, the Creative Spin podcast. It's, uh, it's good to be back, man. I mean, we were talking just before yeah. how, you know, life just stopped because of a stupid pandemic. Yeah. And then, um, you know, being able to do this, to have conversations with, with friends, with, with people, interesting people. It's just not the same thing if you're doing it through through Zoom. Yeah, live. It's a beautiful <laughs> thing compared to be Zoom, it is. all the Zoom calls and everything else, right? I so. mean, you know, we're going to touch base on, on what you do and why, why I invited this guy over here and why, why we're having this conversation to begin with. But, you know, it, you felt the same way, right? Like doing anything online nowadays, it's completely different. You as a musician, by the way, he's a musician too. Um, uh, it was how, how How was that? Like... Well, you know, I, um, at the time with my band, we were actually uh, switching musicians. And so we had to practice new musicians. So we were using uh, a system online. Don't tell me that you guys were trying to... to yeah, we actually, you know, everybody was at home, you know. Were all you my seriously time. practicing yeah. music on Zoom? No, it, I, we tried Zoom, but the audio wasn't <laughs> that great. So we tried a company, the, uh, an app was Jam Kazam. But Jam Kazam. Yeah, I, I would I would subscribe to that just for yeah. the name of it. I mean, that well, you know, technical was <laughs> supposed to be really good, and they did a really nice job. But uh, there was always something like a delay, minimum delay. So oh, man, I can imagine that. That's why I didn't do the podcast was because of that stupid delay. Yeah, because you would ask a question, and then the person would start talking, and then you know the, the, that split second that you're trying to talk, <laughs> and then the other person talks, and the other person stops because they just heard you try to say something. Yeah, and special with music was funny because no, you have you know, to be on. You're not in time at all. That's so crazy. we're three musicians trying to be in sync. So the drummer was like, "Hey." Am I on time? I was like, no, because you're off. I was like, no, but I'm playing right on time. So it was chaotic. I can um, only imagine. You know, we were able to kind of got back together into uh, the rehearsal space and it was okay. And then we crack jokes all the time about it, right? So and, and you guys, I mean, I don't know about all the other members yeah. in your group, but you've been doing this for a while, man. When did you start this? Um, you started playing music when, when you were still in your mom's belly well, or was it like... Almost, <laughs> almost, yeah. It was, um, I started playing drums back in Portugal when I was um, six years old. Are you when sure I it, was, was, it was drums or were you just hitting the... the well, you know what? The, the pots and pans. Yeah, you know? technically it was not the drums. <laughs> and that's how I got into the drums after. Um, uh, my dad was helping out a band back home. And, and um, so I, every time I used to go back home, to my house after being, you know, setting up the equipment and everything yeah, with yeah, the guys, yeah. just watching at that time I was six years old. Did you always have the rhythm for music or was it something yeah. that you had to really focus and learn? I'm asking this because some, some, some musicians tell me, you know what, I'm a good musician because I practice a hell of a lot. Other yeah. musicians go, hey, listen, I just grabbed it and I started playing yeah. it and it worked. Where, where for, do you For fall? me, I think rhythm was natural. Okay. Uh, and then learning all, you know, read music and everything else, yeah, that took me a lot of practice. You should talk to my kid. Yeah. I'm looking, <laughs> I, if he watches this, you know what I'm talking about. No, keep on going. Keep, yeah, he can play. He can play yeah, well, but yeah. he needs to learn how to read music properly. He knows yeah, how to read know, it, but not 100%. It's, it's always better to know how to read. Like, just going back a little bit, when I started playing drums, mm -hmm. you know, 
my first instrument, like you said, was actually pot and pens. Yeah. <laughs> My mom used to get home like, oh my God, yeah. my brand Listen, new pots and pans was like, we got to well, start not, somewhere, not, They're man. not, they're not new somewhere. anymore. They're <laughs> <laughs> smashed up. So my, my dad at the time was like, okay, you know what? I think it's time for you to actually get you a set of drums. Okay. And that's when I started going to the local band there and start playing. So you started with drums. I didn't even know that. Yeah. I've always drums. seen you as a keyboard player. Yeah. So I started on drums and uh, actually when I got to Canada, that's when I started playing keyboards. Because when, when, when did you get here? Uh, 90. In the 90s. So 90, you were yeah. 10 years old. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, technically 12, 13. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, drums were very loud to keep, you know, in a small apartment. When uh, you, I would say so, yeah. So um, my dad was like, you know, there's no way I can get you drums, but I can put you on keyboard or anything. What instrument would you like yeah. to learn? So I said, okay, I'll learn keyboard. So for from your perspective, all you wanted to do is just, you, you just wanted to play music. Music were, in You general. didn't really care about the instrument at that time? You know what? I I was doing drums for such a long time already, you know, mm. even being from 6 to 13. Yeah, that's you know, a long I, time. And I was playing a lot of gigs in Portugal. Believe it or not, I was making money already and I was a little kid, you know. This, this it was is fun. entrepreneurship, people. This this is what I'm talking about yeah, at this age. Unique because, you know, it's such a young kid playing drums in a real band. Yeah, people always like to see the kid playing the, the instruments. And they're like, and, and who's playing that. the drums? I cannot see them. Like, <laughs> Especially the, drum, the drummer, honestly, he's yeah. the worst guy in the band when it comes to positioning. He's always stuck in the back. It's true. Everybody's the yeah. star in the front, the guitar player, the bass player, the singer, obviously. And then who, who's playing that? Oh, the poor drummer's in the back. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's, you know, it was very unique times. Like, I mean, that opened my eyes to everything that was involving music. You know, at so such a young age. After you got here, so you started playing keyboard. And then when did you start saying, okay, you know what? I'm going to be ready to get myself into a band or start playing out, outside of the house. Yeah. When did that happen? Well, that happened right after I got here because I... So you're, still, a, you're a fast learner then. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I started playing drums uh, in a band here in Canada, um, in the Portuguese band. And um, from there, right into keyboard. So were you that, that type of kid that... Uh, got home and instead of uh, hitting the books, you would hit the keyboard? Is that, yeah. that, that was it? Technically, yeah, that's basically what it was. But once you know music a little bit, you know, like, yeah. and then it's easier to actually pick up another instrument because you already have the rhythm. You have the timing, mm. you know, because it's all the same concept. Yeah, music yeah, yeah, is yeah. music. You know, it's creativity and then learn how to kind Listen, of- Listen, uh, you're saying this as if, as if it's the easiest thing in the world. I can't play two notes. So, you know what, and I, but I, I really admire musicians and people who can play any type of instrument because I, I cannot play anything. And I'm always amazed at my kid when, when he, uh, my yeah. kids, both of them, they can play music and it baffles me. I don't know where they've learned because I, I don't know how to play yeah. a thing. Anna, my wife, you know her, yeah. she can't play anything. Uh, so it's, it's amazing to see them play. But you touched on, on the fact that you, you know, you, you came to Canada at a very young age not only did you start playing other instruments and all of that, what was it like to now all of a sudden be integrated in a community um, outside of Portugal, which is, even though it's the same culture, we know it's it's completely different. And, and I'm sure that if, if you're watching us and you're mm -hmm. part of any community in, in the city, you know what I'm talking about. It's the culture that we have here is not the same culture that we have back home. No, it's not. It's um, very different. And... So that's why I'm asking, like, was it hard for you to adapt? I think the most, in general, to adapt was actually knowing the language. Mm. Because in Portugal, we used to learn how to, uh, was Portuguese and French. Yeah. So we had Oh, more. you went the French route. Yeah, uh, okay, well, because, okay. you know. I went the English route, so I still had some, some of, yeah, the, so of the English. Yeah, so back so. home, at least in my town, most of it was, uh, it was French. French. Yeah. So... It was hard in the beginning, you know, just to adapt the whole concept, of, you know, not knowing a language. So it, for me to adapt to the Portuguese community was easy because it was we easier, could speak. I guess. Yeah. You know, okay. it was easier to do it. But once in then in school and everything else, and then, you know, I got started got involved again in music through school, through uh, Central Tech. And it was okay. Cafe Brasiliano, where the coffee is truly amazing, but that's not all they have to offer. Their sandwiches will make your taste buds dance. Every bite is packed with flavor and freshness. Trust me on this one. The vintage style of this place isn't just limited to the decor. They even have a marketplace of quality products that you can browse while you're enjoying your coffee. Perfect to meet your friends or make new ones. 
Cafe Brasiliano is the perfect place for coffee sandwiches and a unique shopping experience. If you're in Toronto, don't forget to swing by at 80 Miller Street. So did the, the passion of, of audio engineering, because that's another thing that you do, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, but you love, you, you love doing that side of things too. Um, and I know this because we talk all the time about this of stuff. I have the insight of, of what's going it on does. here. But, um, we know each other for a long time. I know. I know things. <laughs> yeah, we've known each other for quite a while now. Yeah. 20 plus years probably? Oh, yeah. Quite a while. Quite a while. <laughs> um, so was it a, 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 just a natural transition into also getting into sound engineering and mixing and all that kind of thing? Yeah, because um, basically, you know, like with the background that I had already with knowing all the instruments and knowing, you know, the band set up and all the technical side yeah. of a band. And then it was through school, high, uh, high school, they had a program of uh, engineering. Mm -hmm. So I said, oh, okay, let me take this course. And the, Right there, it started opening up my eyes. Like, whoa, whoa, that's how you record. That's how you do this. But even be before that, you know, we started messing up with cameras and, you know, record one track here, one track there. Oh, so, sure. you know, like, play and with And even the going technique. on stage, you need to get the sound right. You need to oh, get yeah. all that so right, right. Doing all Setting the sound check. It's hours and hours, and, you know, preparing to do a show. So, and that's when you jumped into radio? Actually. Or how did that work out? Because so we met, just by the way, we met at a radio station, at a local radio station, yeah. uh, Portuguese radio station, and you came in as the sound engineer, as the, yeah. what was your actual position there? I'm not 100% sure. It was a radio imager. Imager, so, which so, means, so, I mean, imaging in the sense of sound. Yeah. Uh, producing anything for radio as, you know, singers, all that you're listening to, whatever, yeah. um, uh, commercials, interviews. So anything that was production, uh, Went was, through you. It was through... Uh, and that's how we met. I mean, yeah. at the time, I was doing a little a little show. Um, and but, you came in, and we were doing a lot of the recording and a lot of the stuff yeah. uh, on the back end, yeah. So, actually, uh, what I studied was not for radio. It was uh, for music uh, production. Okay. So, a uh, music producer. But it all kind of fits in. And, and I remember when, when I walked into Trevis, the first day, they scared the heck out of us. It was like, you know what? Most of you think that you're going to all be doing sound engineering and producing, but 75% of you guys, they're not going to be doing what you came in for. Really? They're like, okay, I just paid tons of money to get into this class. And you tell me that I'm not going to do what I'm going to be doing. You know, well, you know I'm what? Do. Uh, I don't agree with the whole scare tactic when, yeah. when they get you into school, but that's not a scare tactic. It's probably a reality tactic, it right? Is. Not tactic, and but it's reality check. Yeah, and then it all makes sense because... Yeah. See what I did there? Check. Check, check, check. Sound, check, sound, sound. See what I did there? It's all technical <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so, but it, it did make sense because on the end of it, the program was so complete that you went through all those phases. Like, I mean, so you actually did everything that you're supposed to do in the business yeah. with audio. And, and he was right because I end up on radio. Yeah, exactly. But my ideal was to be producing music. Which you can still do and of you course. still do. But right? on the end of it, it all made sense because that That's program crazy. would open our eyes to everything that was going on with the music business. Now, so the fact great. that you ended up in a Portuguese radio station, that still has to do a lot with, did you want to keep yourself within the Portuguese culture? Or I, was it just an opportunity by fluke that showed up? It was an opportunity by fluke that showed up. Okay. And, and I must, I have to say, because... Never, you know, never asked them this before. No. So this, yeah. Uh, yeah. So because, uh, you know, once you come out of school, it's very hard to find a job. Yeah. And believe it or not, the last application that I made for, because I never thought of going to the Portuguese, mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, like... Uh, on top not, of it, there's only, there was only at the time like two or three yeah, radio stations. So, so. Believe it or not, I was like, oh, you know what? Let me try the Portuguese station. Let me yeah. put an application in. And... After a couple months, I, th I believe it was three months, they called me, hey, we're, we're looking for a sound engineer and this and that. I was like, cool. All right. <laughs> so that was the start. And you know what? It was a long journey for 14 years. And you, and I know this because we, again, like I said, we talk a lot, uh, but I know that you've, you've had a foot in the Portuguese community, but you've also had the opportunities to be outside of the community yeah. in, in, in the Canadian market, I guess we can say that. Yeah. 
What are the biggest differences that you've you found from one to another? To be honest, uh, I think the culture. The culture, but I mean the business culture. Not mm. only, like, I mean, that actually not the culture itself, the Portuguese culture, it's the business culture. Like, I mean, I, th I think companies. Um, Just the, the way that companies work, work. right? Okay. Yeah. So in general, yeah, um, and the mentality also. Like, I'm asking because I also have an opinion made for of that, and that's why I'm yeah. asking. <laughs> I, and, and, and this is not to be like, because I, I've been through um, a few community radios uh, and TVs, and um, and I've worked with different ethnics. One very unique things that we had at uh, the radio station was we, we used to work with all ethnics. Yeah, like, we used to work with Punjabi, uh, Spanish, Latinos, well, Spanish, yeah. but. Part of South America, uh, Ukrainian. We did a Jamaican. Yeah, that's right. There was a lot of different uh, ethnic groups in that radio exactly. station. That's that's right. Yeah. So I used to work with all of them. How the heck do you record something in Punjab when you don't know anything that the guy's saying? Yeah, so I he could be swearing at you, and you're like, "Okay, good take." <laughs> <laughs> well, I knew by his uh, voice expression, like. Every time. Well, I, I guess the DJ wants to do the best job he can. So I don't I, think he's going to screw it up for himself, right? And, and he used to tell me, oh, again, uh, that's, I knew my cue already. You know, like, okay, used to, okay. you know, blah, 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 blah. And, but that's interesting. Though. And this host, like, I mean, I have to give him credit because he was really good. Yeah. Um, he used to make a commercial out of a business card. God damn. No script. We're like, okay, uh, we're doing, it was like, we're doing about 10 commercials. Like, what? <laughs> 10 commercials. Yeah. No script. No script. I'm like, Man. business card. Da, 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 crazy da, da, da. animal. You just go, oh, sorry again. That's a crazy experience right there. But I know that after that, you adventured yourself into, into video, right? Yeah. And that was like, I guess it within the same realm because you're yeah. still dealing with audio. Yeah. But now you're just putting some images with that. But you, you decided to kind of jump into that as well. Yeah. At the time, the company um, opened, a, uh, opened up a TV station. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were a part of all the beginning, you know, again, rewiring everything. You like, got to do everything. From, and which was a very good experience. And um, so that got my feet went into the uh, TV. And, um, and then I went to Humber College and Seneca. Uh, Centennial yeah. was to do a lot of the video production. Um, no, good for you. I, that's one of the things that I, that I admired in you was that, you know, you got your, yourself into the trying new things. And then you said, okay, you know what? I'm not only going to base myself on experience. Let me dive into to school oh, and, and study a little bit more because these are fields that, yeah, you can learn a lot, especially nowadays. Time is different nowadays. We're yeah. talking about 20 years ago. So YouTube wasn't like the big thing that no. it is today and you couldn't get as no. much information as you can today. So back then, you you would kind of need to go to a yeah. school to learn that extra, the the professional little bits and, yeah. and parts of whatever well, field you were getting into. Because most of the teachers are actually people that work in the business. Yeah. So you you learn all the tricks. Yeah, I remember when tricks, I right? was when I was in the at the newspaper working at the newspaper. I that's when I decided to also go to Humber and get my graphic design course. But that's the thing. I was already working at the newspaper and I went to do the course. And the good thing, and I don't know if that happened with you, was that whatever I was learning in school, I was applying it the next oh, day at definitely. work. Yeah. And that was huge. That was huge because. It's a huge advantage to do that if you can find a place that you it's could true. start off, even if you're just, you know, starting off. And I'm saying this because I know a lot of the people that watch this, you know, they're 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 starting to get their feet wet in in whatever kind of media. It's important to get your feet wet and and just start and experiment and while you're learning in school, because then you can just apply it. And that's so much better than trying to learn everything and then yep. trying to find a job and then trying to remember everything. It's it's much better and to do the two at the same time, even though it's harder because no, it is. The hours are crazy. Well, because trust it, me, I know. It was uh, you know, <laughs> after school programs all the time, yeah. right? So, um, but that's how I did mine too. Yeah. So you're right because you know I run into this problem, and the teacher will actually explain it to you. You're like, oh, you know, try this, try that. Yeah. So. It was, it was a plus. So it was like, we went to them to get the answers, right? They, they, yeah. they were the YouTube and the Google of the time. Oh, it's like you it's, went to the teachers and said, okay, listen, I'm doing this. I remember I was, uh, I was doing the newspaper and, uh, you know, I was asking my teacher, like, okay, how do I, when I, when I have so many pictures, what do you do? Like, how do you do yeah. the layout? And, and he would explain it to me and all of that. And, and that's why I always say, even my kids now, like, I tell them, listen, whatever you guys do, just, you know, ask your teachers because they, they've gone through it, man. Yeah. 
it's it's easy nowadays to just try to type that onto to YouTube and find yeah. it. And in most cases, I have to say, 90% of the time, you will find the answer to yeah. that. But it's still better to go through a human experience. So use whoever's been in the field for a long time and just use yeah. their experience, man. You don't buy experience. No. And that's a very unique. Uh, going through different companies, um, you find all these youth coming in and, uh, you know, they have schooling. Awesome. Yeah. They have this, the experience with school, but they don't have field experience. The field experience. And that's one weekend. So important. Yeah. Because we've been doing this so, so many years. I mean, Paul, Paul, this is why we have the gray hair, man. <laughs> I know. This that's, is why that's we have the gray hair. Uh, it's for the experience. It's not just for anything else. And you work wiser too. <laughs> like, I mean, a lot of times you, they, oh, no, it has to be by the book. No, like it doesn't matter how you get no, there. No, I, I would actually say anything to do with this kind of media, you have to, a lot of times you have to step away from the book. Yeah. You got to figure things out. Because once when shit hits the fan, literally, you're going to have to figure it out. That's, that's and you got to be quick on your feet to figure that out. You have to be creative. There, there you go. Creative. Yeah, you got to be creative. Creative, creative. creative. No. So, Paul, continuing on your journey. Now I'm curious. Now you're... You're a musician, you're a sound engineer, you're a video guy, you like doing editing. Which one of these is the one that, that you like the most or, or do you have a favorite one or do you like just doing everything? I don't think I have something that's, that's a, a favorite thing because they all work together. Mm. I mean, if you do video, you have audio. True. So, and you can have video as well. Yeah, I exactly. Guess. So yeah. in all these three, they all work Together. They all work together. Yeah, yeah, for so, sure. So, and, you know, obviously I, I would say audio was probably one of my first to, um, you know, because probably that's where I worked most. Mm -hmm. um, but three years now, like, I think it's, everything is even. Like, I mean. Yeah. Now so, you've even evolved to podcasts as well. Of course, yeah. Do a lot know, of uh, podcast editing too, right? Yeah. So we do a lot of, lately it's, it's all podcasts, basically. Yeah. Video, audio. Mostly it's all I mean, podcasts. Can I just say podcasts are the best? I mean, come on. No, it's, it's <laughs> you know, we, you have to go with, with through times. Like, I mean, you know, everything has changed. The old kind of media has changed. Yeah. Social media, it's a new monster out there. Like, I mean, the old and don't, don't get me wrong. If you work on TV and radio, like, I mean, it, there's space for everything right now. Agreed. You know, like, I, I think there's a lot of, and we've spoken about this a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of debate between what we call now old media, which is radio, TV, yeah. magazines, newspapers, all that kind of thing, with the new media, which is social media and and the True. channels that we and all the platforms that we can use in social. And there's this war of like new versus old. And as much as I feel like we're obviously moving into the future, and the future is going to be online, is online, yeah. rather. Uh, I don't think that that's uh, something that, you know, is going to kill the old media. I mean, we've said this time and time again, when when the radio was on and then the TV came on and then it's, oh, radio is going to die. Then it's still around. Yeah. You know, when all of these things came to kill the other one, but it never really did. I think it's about evolving. I think it's about us making sure that we can integrate the old with, with the new and make the old, quote unquote, I'm putting air quotes here, make the old have a flavor of the new, right? There's a lot of things that you can do with the old media, with radio and TV and all of that, in conjunction with all the new media that can make that old kind of sound new yeah. and look new and act new. And you're seeing that more and more now. I mean, you're seeing the big channels and even the small channels, whatever. You're seeing a lot of people do that change. Well, they have to. to if they want to keep up uh, with the new world of, of uh, broadcasting in yeah. general, yeah. I believe they, they have to adapt because uh, if they don't... Uh, That's when they die. Yes. So in, in a whole, I think like when you look at the whole landscape of the old media, the ones that are going to survive are the ones that are going to adapt and are going to join forces with the new media yeah. to go ahead. And I think, you know what, any of the older media that uh, that can, you know, just grab on to the, all the audience that they've built throughout the years and now deliver the same professionalism through new media as well, those are the ones that are going to win. Because if you're just sitting down saying, no, I, I've done this for 20 years and, or 30 or 50 years and I'm not going to change, those, those guys are dying. Oh yeah, that, that time is gone. 
like I said, there's still space for everybody. Absolutely. Because, you know, open signal versus closed signal. And now I can explain, uh, you know, uh, if you turn on the radio and it's an open signal, it's still easier to, to do sales for those kind of companies. Yeah. Open signal. Anything that's locked in, like, oh, I know you need to buy into this channel. Yeah. That's how podcasting used to be seen as a locked, uh, yeah. like a, a locked thing, but it's not anymore because now you're capable of, of listening to podcasts with your phone anywhere, anywhere on, your, on your car. Yeah. So now it opened up. So that's what I mean. Like things are evolving. And I think the old have to adapt to the new and the new have to, you yeah. know, figure out ways to still work with the old because I think they all have like a place. And um, I don't know, from your experience, from what we've, we've spoken, I think you, you have the same views as I do. No, I do. I do because it, they're all suffering right now. Yeah. You know, anything that's closed channels, they're, they're suffering. I think the ones that are suffering are the ones that are still very, well, you know, stepping yeah, back and very, they yeah. don't want to. And my honest opinion right now, like, and people can criticize it, but that's my point of view. If you have your own closed signal, open up. Open it up. Yeah. Create your own website, transmit it live. Let it go. Like you can because do a, you can do a live transmission on anything. You got Facebook. Exa you exa got YouTube. Exactly. You've got because just, I mean, just why should I be paying you know a subscription of a channel for nine dollars or ten dollars? That you know you're limiting yourself. Yeah, you're limiting your audience, and and that's not good for anyone. So the audience isn't getting your you know your broadcast. You're not getting audience. Your sponsors aren't going to get eyeballs or, or exactly ears it. on on what you're putting out. It just doesn't make any sense. So if you have an open signal, you know, more people have access. You have more audience. Yep. And uh, you can tell that to your client. Listen, I, my channel can produce 10,000 views uh, in a month, you know, 15 or even 10. Doesn't matter. But at least you have the stats to give your clients. So listen, this is my reach. On the closed signal, you're like, this, why, you know, people paying for it. There's only a certain kind of people that will pay for that channel. Yeah. So, you know, I, I was listening to a couple of podcasts not too long ago, and uh, there were these comedians that were saying that, you know, they went from being comedians at, at a certain place, and then they got lucky if they got into SNL or to, to TV, essentially, that's what they were saying. And then the next step was Netflix, if they could get a Netflix thing. And then now they're like, why don't we just put stuff on YouTube? And they're getting huge on YouTube. And it's like, this is the evolution. You're seeing this go quick, quick, quick. And... And the ones that are quick to adapt are the ones that are going to win. I, I compare line. the same thing with, with uh, CDs. Remember the CDs, right? I know, those and, round things, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you put on to a machine and you listen. So imagine this, you know, what killed the CD? It was the MP3s. Yeah. And it was the video clips. Yeah. Open signal. Look at of all it. of these artists that we have out there now. And there's so many that I'm not going to even try to name them. But that started with Vine, started with yeah. TikTok, started with YouTube. Like... <laughs> They didn't need any it's any promoters. Age. It was it's the new age, it's the new way of doing things. So, yeah. my final question to you, before we end this up, is if it went fast. If Paul from now is talking to Paul when he was eighteen, let's say an eighteen year old Paul was sitting right beside you, and wanted to start doing what you're doing, what would you tell him to do? Ah, uh, well, I would tell him to um, and just do it. Like I mean, yeah. go after what you really Don't be want. Afraid. Don't you know, be afraid. Just do it. Yes. Yeah, sometimes you, you you overthink things like, oh, is it going to work? Oh, it's not going to work. You know what? And looking back now, I probably would jump sooner to be as a freelancer. Yeah. I would tell myself, you know what? Start your own thing. Start your own thing. I did, but in a different. I looked more into my the music as a freelancer. You know, like as yeah to to be more of a freelancer kind of thing, but also say in the business side because. For sure. Like, and some of the projects that you have, stick to it. Yeah. You know, modify it, change Believe it. Believe in yourself. That's what I always say to you, young I, crowd, man. I look back, you know, in 2007, I started an online radio station. Yeah. I and remember. that was... I created the logo for that. Yeah, didn't I? <laughs> 2006, 2007. If I had keep that, to, you know, I would say even to before COVID. You could have been competing with Spotify right now, Paul. It would Just be saying, a, man. Yeah, but you know what? Don't stop believing in what you able to do yeah and the key thing have the right people beside you yeah because choose you know, the right people to be beside you 100 percent. i agree you know, with that i agree with it's, that it's it's hard to find people that you actually have you don't need many vision. you don't need many you need a couple no it is you, you need yeah. to find people who think the same way as you that's that's the bottom line and 
don't speak with anybody that don't understand the same language because you're just wasting your time, wasting your time. <laughs> you're getting frustrated. So any kind of business that you involve with have, and if you don't understand, just hire someone that can understand the business you're in. Like 100%. with media right now, it's a new monster out there. Hire someone that understands about media and your life will be a lot easier, you know, 100%. less, less stress and believe in them and let them work because that's where you're hiring them for. Yeah, exactly. No, that's, that's, that's a topic for another show, man. We need to talk about that. I need to bring you in to talk about the details of this new world, this new age of, uh, of media. But that, that's going to be for another episode. I'm inviting you yeah. already for another episode. Thank you. This, this is the way we work around here. My pleasure. Um, but uh, thank you, man. Thank you for coming out, over, helping me out, set this whole thing up. Yeah. Um, you know, this is, this is you know, a, new, a new studio that is yeah. also a cafe. Um, it's a beautiful place. It's, it's really cool if you guys can swing by. Uh, we're going to have some sort of information going on here. So I don't know exactly what yet. So the best coffee, everything to deal with <laughs> this coffee. This is amazing. You have, you have a podcast, you have coffee. This is Motorcycles. This is Motorcycles too. You got, got everything. Very unique. Um, Very unique. But this, this is a new vibe for us. We're going we're gonna to see how this goes, but I think it's going to work out nice. Um, but thank you. Thank you for swinging by Thanks and helping welcome. us set all this up and being, being one of the first guests of this uh, second part two. You, uh, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's a new season, guys. It's a Anyways, creative spin. So do do the fun stuff, subscribes, comments, all that, all, all the jazz. You guys know what to do. See you later. Peace.